on, sing this out. He shall reign. He shall reign forever. Strongholds now surrender for the Lord. Our God has overcome. Who can be against us? Jesus, our defender. He is the Lord and he has overcome. He shall reign. Oh uh-huh. 
your peace I find, it's in your strength I rise. It's just you, Jesus. It's just you, Jesus. You cast down every lie. Your name is truth and life. It's just you, Jesus. It's just you, Jesus. It's in your peace I find. It's in your strength I rise. It's just you, Jesus. It's just you, Jesus. You cast down every lie. Your name is truth and life. It's just you, Jesus. Let's up a shout of praise this morning. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you guys for watching online as well. I love that song, guys. Your name is Breakthrough. He's already had every victory, and he'll have every victory in the future. Amen. Yeah. Let's have a seat. We have our preschool kids starting back today, which is huge. We're so thankful for that at the 11 o'clock service, and we're going to show you guys what they're going to be learning this month. So let's go ahead and take a look at the screen for a quick one-minute video. Okay, have you ever been moving a large item with someone and it started to wobble or feel off balance, like you're losing control, and you just know that at any second they're gonna drop their end, and when this happens, that person will usually say, don't worry, I've got it. Or maybe you've had a child run up to you frantic to show you their latest scraped elbow or knee, and the blood makes it look much worse than it is, but you know they need attention and reassurance, so you say, don't worry, I've got it. People of all ages experience circumstances that leave us looking for someone who can help, someone who's got our back and can help carry the load. And this month, we want to begin teaching preschoolers that God is the best someone for the job. No matter what our situation or how uncertain our circumstances may be, we can know that God is with us wherever we go and God's got it. This kind of trust in God is what allows us to sing in the rain, which is why we thought sing in the rain would make the perfect theme. Week one. Good reminder, God's the best guy for the job. It's that simple. Awesome. Um, no, we're so thankful to have our preschoolers back in class next service. I know I'm thankful as a mom of a preschooler. Um, and we're just so excited that God is still moving and that he's still making a way at such a crazy time for our children to be involved in service. Um, at this moment, we're going to go into our next song, and we're just going to invite you to stand, sit, lay down, do cartwheels, do whatever you feel comfortable doing during worship. Just whatever the Lord puts on your heart, this is a safe place to do it. Why don't you stand as we sing this morning?
It's great to have you guys with us. Those of you that are watching us online, it's great to have you as well. Praise God for you. Uh, we always want to be a help and encouragement in this crazy time that we're living in. And so if you have any needs, you're online with us today. If you have any needs whatsoever, uh, you want us to pray for you, uh, then please send us a message online uh, in our Facebook inbox for the Ridge Point Church page. Let us know. We would love to be able to pray for you today and uh, know how we can help you during this crazy a uh, difficult time of social distancing and uh, and social unrest, for that matter. So it's good to have you guys with us today. For those of you that are here joining us in person, you guys look great this morning. I'm so happy that you're here. 
I want to jump right into what I want to talk about today. Uh, we're going to take a detour uh, today uh, from the, uh, the Gospel Lens series because I have something really important that I feel like God's put on my heart. Uh, a, a direction, if you will, that I believe God has taken us, and uh, I want to share that with you today. A few weeks ago, uh, we were in this series called The Good Shepherd, and loved this series, uh, talking all about Jesus and how Jesus changes our lives. We were back in uh, the book of Psalms, Psalms 23, reading through that entire uh, um, um, chapter of Psalms, and it literally just blessed my heart so much. And during that week, I feel like God put this on my heart. I was also reading a book with some pastor friends of, of mine uh, from the area uh, called um, uh, Goliath Must Fall. It's a book by Louis Giglio, who's been a guy that I've admired for many years. He's an author, a pastor, um, evangelist, uh, a little bit of everything, and, and just love reading his material. And so uh, he wrote this book called Goliath Must Fall. And when he did this, there's a chapter in there that talks about... Um, Psalm 23. The whole chapter is kind of based around Psalm 23. And so when we were back in this, this series called um, The Good Shepherd a few weeks ago, I, this message was really on my heart. And uh, I, I kind of threw it all together and, and put my words down on, on paper as best as possible. Used a lot of Louis Giglio's words, by the way. I'll, I'll be telling you more about that in a moment. And I had this whole message ready on Friday morning. I was ready to preach it on Sunday. I was really excited about it. Talked to uh, Brian Griffith that Friday morning and uh, literally changed my entire sermon on Friday because I felt like that's what God was telling us to do. And, and Brian was speaking some clarity and wisdom to me in that moment as well. And so we wanted to capitalize on this, this opportunity. And so this particular sermon that I'm going to, or this particular topic I'm going to talk about today is, is based around this chapter in the book called Goliath Must Fall. Well, this Wednesday night, 6.30 here at the church, we're starting a book study. And I'm really, really, really excited about this opportunity. This is a good opportunity for community. If you've been struggling during this time, you're really needing to be around other people in this time of social distancing, this is a great opportunity for community. It's a great opportunity for us to kind of dive in the word through this book uh, and what, what God has laid on, on Lou Giglio's heart. And it's a time for us to find freedom. Freedom is what we're about here at Ridgepoint Church. We're real people finding real freedom and showing real love in Christ. And this book will lead us, will help us seek God, uh, showing us, God showing us that he can take care of us, that he has already conquered the giants. As Michael's already said today, he's already won the battles. He's already conquered the giants. And so we kind of put this message on hold for a day like today so that we can springboard off this and move into our book study this Wednesday night. So if you haven't read the book yet, it's totally okay. If you haven't purchased the book yet, I encourage you today, go to our website. Uh, it's ridgepoint.net forward slash bookstudy. That will get you onto the Amazon link to get onto Amazon by the book. Uh, you can also download the digital version. Uh, if you have an iPhone, it's super easy to do that. Uh, Android, I don't know uh, because I don't speak your language. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I am, yes, a bit of an Apple snob. I apologize. That's just me. I, I, I apologize. Anyway, moving on. So this book in this chapter, it's chapter 8. We're going to go through six sessions over the next uh, couple, uh, couple months leading up to Christmas in this book. And this is not one of them, by the way, so I'm not giving away too much material right now. But I want to take us back to Psalms 23 just for a moment as we reflect on David's words that he penned so, so many years ago. And how much comfort that these words have brought so many people over the years. How much comfort that these words have brought probably you during difficult times in your lives. And so let's read this scripture again together. It says this, Psalms 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Lord, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness 
and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How comforting is that? Like, I mean, every single time I read those words that David penned so many years ago, every single time, there's this sense of, of calmness that just comes over me. I don't know about you. There's this sense of calmness that just permeates throughout my being. And I love just reading those words and feeling that comfort from God. But I want to kind of hone in. Uh, this book is called Goliath Must Fall, Winning the Battles Against Our Giants. You all know the story of David and Goliath. I'm sure if you've been in church at all in the past, or maybe if you haven't even been in church, uh, David was this wee little man. The Bible calls him a ruddy man, little little tiny guy, the, the smallest of all of his brothers. And, and, and this little guy, was facing this giant, this big Goliath, and he put him on the ground, killed him that day. And, and there's, we can read all about that back in the Old Testament, but nonetheless, this, this story represents the little guy facing the big guy, and, and this is kind of a common theme, a common theme in, in, in many folks' lives or many folks' uh, um, uh, lives in general. And so this story just really speaks to a lot of folks. To many of us, and it has throughout the years. But, but we're going to kind of hone in on what David has said here uh, in Psalms 23. Verse 5 tells us that God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Now, let me, let me just throw out this disclaimer really quick. A lot of the things that I'm going to say today are direct quotes from Louis Giglio. A lot of the content that I'm going to talk about today are direct thoughts from Louis Giglio. So I'm not going to take any credit for what, what is being said here today. I'm literally reflecting something that, that I've read that has really touched my heart. So I want to throw that out there. Not original thoughts. Uh, a lot of these are not original thoughts. So I just want to be very clear with you guys. I'm setting us up today so that we can prepare to dive into this amazing resource that God has provided uh, on Wednesday. So verse 5 tells us that, that God prepares a table before the presence for us in the presence of of our enemies. And honestly, as I was growing up, I'm just going to be perfectly honest with you guys. As I was growing up, I just kind of assumed when I read those, this scripture that God prepares a table in the presence of our enemies for us. I just kind of thought, wow, one day, one day uh, God's going to exalt me. One day God's just going to lift me up, Trent. He's just going to lift me up and he's going to exalt me above all these people that have been haters, right? Like, as I was growing up, that's what I thought. I, as I was growing up, I was just thinking, someday God's going to just make over me. He's just going to make over me in the presence of my enemies. And I can look down on my enemies, those folks that have been haters all my life, and I can be like, ha, I told you so. Have you ever felt that way? Don't admit it right now, literally. But have you ever felt that way? Like, when I read, in my craziness growing up, I just kind of thought that that's what this scripture meant. Like one day I'm going to have all my enemies surrounding me and God's going to sit down at a table and we're just going to have a meal together and just going to rub it in their faces, right? I, that's horrible for me to admit, but I, that's kind of what I thought as I was growing up. Like that's just kind of what I thought when I read this. Can't wait to see their faces, right? All those people that have been uh, just thrown rocks at me my entire life and different. In my ignorance, in my ignorance, that's just what I thought, Right? Check this out. Here's, here's where this, what this, none of that's true, okay? That is not what this scripture means. But in my ignorance, that's just kind of what I thought. This is what the scripture means. When darkness is closing in around us, when trouble is on the horizon and, and you, you're getting ready to get the bad news, when you're getting ready to get the bad news that you've been dreading for so long, when, when, when you just learn that you lost your job, when you just learn that, that, a, that a loved one has cancer, when you just, you're struggling just to hang on, when you don't see a way forward, you feel like that you're just kind of under all this pressure, all this stress, all this anxiety, when darkness is literally closing around you, here comes God. And he breaks through all that darkness and he opens up his picnic basket and lays it out at this table right before all these things that are coming against you. And he wants you to sit down at the table and have a meal with him. Darkness has closed in around you. You just got the bad news. All these things are happening around you and here comes God with his picnic basket and spreads out this big photo of food 
at the table right in front of all the things that are coming against you. Now that, my friends, that is the depiction that I should have been thinking about all growing up. Jesus comes in, throws out the tablecloth, and provides a feast for us in the presence of all that junk that's coming around us. Louis Giglio says it like this. Right in the midst of the fray, in full view of the things that are threatening us, our good shepherd spreads a table of provisions for us. And Jesus wants to show us that he can provide everything that we need to survive and successfully walk through the darkest valley. Like he wants, to, wants us to know that he can provide every right after this, when he prepares the table before us, then he goes on to say, though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Why? Because Jesus just provided everything that I needed at the feast. Man, that's like mind-blowing to me. Mind-blowing and mind-boggling to me. You see, that's the exact opposite of what we want, isn't it? It's the exact opposite of what you and I want. I said this a couple weeks ago. But God doesn't promise that he's going to hit the eject button every time that we're surrounded by hardship or trials or a challenge. He doesn't promise that all we have to do is hit the eject button and there we go, we're out of it. That's not what he promises us. He promises us so much bigger and so much stronger. He promises that he'll prepare a table before, before us and for us. He will prepare a table for us, a feast for us in the presence of our enemy. He'll provide exactly what you and I need, the sustenance that you and I need. And guess what? It's a table for two, just you and Jesus. It's a table for two that he's preparing for you and for Jesus. The problem is, oftentimes, oftentimes, God, God sets the table for two and we sit down. You and I sit down and somehow, somehow, after we sit down, we allow the enemy to take the other seat. When you and I sit down at the table, we allow the enemy to take the other seat. And before we know it, we're sitting at the table with the enemy. And we don't even know it. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. When the enemy is sitting at your table, I'm going to go through a few things in a moment, but when the enemy is sitting at your table, when the enemy is sitting at your table, the first thing that he's probably telling you is that God is not good and that you can't trust him. When the enemy is sitting at your table, the first thing he's trying to tell you is that God is not good and you cannot trust him. That's the first thing. It's the old story. It goes all the way back to the garden. God's not good. And you can't trust him. If God is so good, then why has all this hardship happened to you? Why are all these negative things happening in your life? Why is pain coming in your life? Does all this sound familiar to you? When the enemy is sitting at your table, the first thing he's saying is God's not good and you can't trust him. Does that sound familiar? We know that God is good. Amen? We know that God is good. And we believe in Romans 8.28 when Romans 8.28 says that we know that all things God works for the good of those that love Him and have been called according to His purposes. We know that. that We know we have the head knowledge of that information. We know that that's true. We know that and we believe that. We believe that God will redeem all things. One day all injustice will turn to justice. One day all sorrow will turn in and be replaced with rejoicing and gladness. We know and we believe all that. But Louis Giglio says, even though we know all these things, even though we have the head knowledge of knowing that all things work together for the good of those that love Him and are caught according to His purposes, we know all those things, but we just can't move forward for some reason. We just can't accept that God is on our side. Yeah, God, I, I think about it like this. Yeah, God's for you. Absolutely. I can stand here all day and tell you how much God is for you. But when it comes to me... For some reason, we just can't accept that God is on our side, walking through the valley with us. We know the truth, but logic alone won't convince us that the truth will set us free. It's crazy, isn't it? He makes the point that you are the only person responsible for not allowing the enemy to have a seat at your table. Only you. You're the only one responsible for that. You're the only one responsible for entertaining Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts. And you can decide here and now, today, 
that you're not going to give the enemy a seat at your table and that God has prepared this table just for you and him. That the, that's the theme for, the, for today. Don't give the enemy a seat at your table that God has prepared for you and him. That's the theme for today. How do you know if the enemy is sitting at your table? Like that's a million dollar question. And how do you know if the enemy is sitting at your table? I'm going to give a few quotes from the book. Again, these are not my thoughts. These are thoughts from uh, God has given to Louis Giglio. And I think they're important for us to kind of read through today. So I'm just throwing that out there. I want you to, um, uh, to know that today. I'm going to give you a few quotes from the book that help identify if the enemy is sitting at your table or not. Again, these are the points that, that, that God has put on his heart. And I want to make sure that we, we understand that today. First, first things first. If the enemy is sitting at your table, then you think that you're not going to make it. If the enemy is sitting at your table today, you think that you're not going to make it. Like, if this is it. This is the end. We're, I'm not going to make it through this. No matter what happens, this is the end. Uh, he has you thinking that you're never going to get free. He has you thinking that, that your sin is just too big for God to forgive. Like if the enemy's sitting at your table, you think that whatever it is that you've done or whatever hole that you've dug for yourself, that there's no way you're going to get out of this hole. He has you thinking that you're finished, that, that this is the way it is, this is the way that it's always going to be. But remember what Psalms 23 says, that the good shepherd, our shepherd, has prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. So check this out. Let God fight the battle for you. Let God fight the battle for you. Yes, this sin may be too big for you, but it's not too big for God. Let God fight the battle for you. Notice that David wrote, when I walk through the valley. He knew that, 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 that he was going to have to walk through the valley, but he also knew that he wasn't going to be stuck in the valley for forever. He knew that he wasn't going to be stuck in the valley for forever. He knew that, that he was going to get through this. He knew that the good shepherd was going to lead him through to the other side. Listen, folks, you will not be dealing with this problem for forever. I don't care. The coronavirus will not be here for forever. Amen? It's not going to be here for forever. It's going to be gone at some point. I don't know when that is, but God does, and I can put my faith and trust in him. Whatever you're going through in your life right now, whatever sin, whatever difficulty that you're going through in your life, you will not be going through this forever. I tend to say this a lot to my wife and to others that are around me. Uh, this is just a season that you're going through. It will pass. It's just a season that you are going through and it will pass. Second, if the enemy is sitting at your table, you feel like you're not good enough. If the enemy is sitting at your table, you feel like you're not good enough and that you're never going to be good enough. He tempts you with thoughts like this. I don't matter. I don't matter. I've never mattered to anyone. God doesn't care about me. God doesn't even love me anymore because he's withholding his, his presence from me. I've done too much. I've just done too much. You don't understand, Pastor. I know that, that that scripture that you talked about, I understand that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in, in Him may not perish, but have ever... I understand. I understand that scripture. I get it. But you just don't understand what I've done. I'm special. I'm different than everyone else. I've just done too much. You don't get it, Pastor. So if the enemy's sitting at your table, you feel like you're not good enough for God. You feel like... You're not good enough. Well, let me tell you something very important. The word table in Psalms 23 means feast. Okay? When, when, when David writes the word table in Psalms 23, it literally means feast. God is preparing a feast for you because he cares for you. How many of you have, have prepared food at your home for, for family members that you actually like, right? Like, if you prepare food for family members that you like, it's really good food. If it's for family members that you don't like too much or friends that you don't like too much, you get pizza. It's just the way it works, right? <laughs> Michael said, hey, we got pizza last week. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyway, when you prepare food for someone that you love, you put love into that food, right? That's just what happens. And God says, or David says that God's preparing a feast for us. Man, I want that feast. I want that feast. 
feelings will tell you that you're not good enough and that God doesn't love you. But the cross of Jesus Christ tells us a different story. The cross of Christ tells us that God loves us and that Jesus loves us and that he cares so much for us that he would give his life for us. Those feelings of I'm not good enough and God doesn't love me and no one loves me. The cross tells us a different story. Jesus gave his life for you and me. He didn't waste a single drop of blood, folks. He showed us that he loves us in spite of us. In spite of our sin, in spite of our, our, our uh, going against him, in spite of us wanting to, to, to go for the desires of the flesh, he died for us anyway. You're never too far gone. You've never done too much. And you're never too far away from God. You are treasured by God. You are treasured by the God of the universe. And if you believe anything different, then you've likely allowed the enemy to have a seat at your table. You believe anything different, you've likely allowed the enemy a seat at your table. Third, if the enemy is at your table, then you think that everyone is out to get you. Listen, listen closely, okay? This is the one that I really, really dug into myself. If, if, you, if you've allowed the enemy a seat at your table, then you think that everyone's out to get you. This is a big one. While there may be people around you, there may be people around us in our family, in our school, in our workplace that don't like us and may be saying bad things about us that aren't true, paranoia typically comes from the pit of hell. While there may be people around us that don't like us, sometimes we just have to accept it. Sometimes it's on them. It's not on us. But when it is on us, we just have to ask for forgiveness, swallow our pride, figure out what we've done to offend someone. But typically, paranoia comes from the pit of hell. If the enemy is at your table, he may have you uh, having thoughts that no one likes you, that everyone's against you, that everyone's talking smack behind your back, that they're all scheming to take you out. And you better watch your back, man. You better watch your back. Because they're out to get you. This one hit home with me. I'm just going to be really honest with you guys today. When you know that someone doesn't care too much for you, you're always making up the worst case scenarios in your mind, aren't you? I, maybe you're not like me. I don't know. I'm not hearing many amens out there tonight or today. But, but if you think that someone doesn't like you, you always make up the worst case scenario in your head of what's happening, what they're thinking right now. They're out to get me. I know they're going to get me. You think the absolute worst possible outcome. But here's the question that Louis Giglio poses. If our good shepherd leads us, and if his goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives, then why would we as sheep ever feel the need to watch our backs? Did you catch that? If he follows us all the days of our lives, if our good shepherd leads us and he follows us all the days of our lives, then why would we as sheep ever feel the need to watch our backs? This type of thinking doesn't come from the good shepherd. This paranoia that everyone's out to get me doesn't come from the good shepherd. This paranoia from the enemy causes us to assume a defensive posture. Believing that everyone's out to get us. He says, Louis Giglio says this, with clean, I'm sorry, with hands clenched and a suspecting lens that turns every look into a glare and every unintended lack of notice into a hateful snub, we begin to take on the world ourselves. You ever felt like that? It's me against the world. Everybody's out to get me. Everybody's talking about me. It's me against the world. Do you do that? Do you feel like everyone's got something against you? You always have to watch your back. If that's so, it's possible. It's possible that the enemy has a seat at your table. Here's the thing. God wants us to focus less on who, is, who it is that's surrounding us. You remember, God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He wants us to focus less on everything that's around that table and focus more on who's sitting at that table. Does that make sense? Do you remember when, when Peter stepped off the boat? When, when, when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water. And Jesus, uh, Peter said, uh, Jesus, if it's you, Christ, if it's you, bid me to step off the boat. Well, remember the waves were crashing down? 
the waves were coming in, the wind was blowing, and Jesus says, okay, Peter, step off the boat. And Peter steps off the boat. And as soon as he steps off the boat, the boat, what does he do? He takes his eyes off Christ. And when he takes his eyes off Christ, he begins to sink. See, God's not wanting you to worry about all those things that surrounding the table that he set before you in the presence of your enemies. He's not wanting you to focus on all those things. He's wanting you to allow him to sit down at the head of that table and for you to focus your attention on him. You see, when we focus our attention on who's sitting at the table, we don't have time to focus on who's nipping at our toes around the table. I don't know about you, but that's powerful in my spirit today. That's powerful to me. What do we do about this? Where do we go from here? How do we make the enemy get up from our table and allow the good shepherd to have a seat with us? The first thing that we have to do, guys, is to, 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 to know. The first thing that we must do is to make sure that we are spiritually, spiritually alive. Make sure that we have a spiritual pulse today. We need to make sure that, that, that we really have Jesus in our hearts. We have to make sure that, that we really have surrendered everything to Him. 1 John 5.12 says, Whoever has the Son has life. And whoever has the Son of God does not, whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. We have to make sure that we are spiritually alive. Is Jesus your good shepherd? Is Jesus your shepherd? Do you have life? If not today, you need to surrender to Him. He gave us life for you. He died on the cross for your sin. And He died on the cross for my sin. Make sure that you're spiritually alive today by giving your life completely to Him. First and foremost. Second, Louis Giglio would point, it, point out this. You must let the Good Shepherd lead you day by day. Every single day, you must surrender to the Good Shepherd and allow Him to lead you. Allowing anyone to tell you uh, what it is. Um, uh, allowing anyone to, to, to tell us what to do. It's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? Like, we don't want people to tell us what to do. We don't want to take any lip from anybody, right? It's counterintuitive. By nature, we don't like to be told what to do. But, but when you look at Psalms 23, it's all about the shepherd leading us. It's all about the shepherd guiding us and defending us, taking care of us. You see, our natural state doesn't like that. Our natural state has pride in it, right? Our natural state says, no, I'm going to do this all on my own. I don't need Jesus. I don't need the good shepherd. I'm going to do it all on my own. Every day I'm just going to step out and do it all on my own. That's our natural state. It's to go the opposite direction of God. The shepherd isn't looking for control or power over our lives. He's seeking to lead us to what truly satisfies us. Therefore, we must humble ourselves before God and allow him to lead us. I'm going to invite the worship folks to come up. Um, there's so much more in this chapter. There's so much more in this book. This is just a little taste of what I believe that, that God is showing us right now to get us prepared for this study. And I hope that you'll come out Wednesday night, 630, to, to go through this book with us. I'm going to close with this story, though. Taylor and I, last night, were looking through some photos on her phone. And we found a photo of uh, us walking down the... the, the um, Holler, I want to say holler. Can I say that today? We were walking down the holler. Uh, it's Bradlin Branch. We got to the mouth of the holler, and, and Lincoln was jumping in a puddle, and so we took a video of it. And we got a glimpse of the property that we that we were blessed to purchase this year, right, where our house is now. We got a glimpse from, from that video, and I just remember looking, looking at that property, and it was all grown up. There were trees everywhere. There was brush everywhere. Literally every time we walked over on the property, we got ticks all over us. It was just awful. It was so grown up. I mean, it was just really, really, really bad. The first day after we purchased the property, I took a weed eater. Okay, a little Walmart, $150 weed eater down there. I thought I was going to clear off the property, right? Like I was, I, it was bad. I took my weed eater down there. and I was trying to cut a path out. And Lincoln and, the kid, uh, and Elena and Taylor were over on the other side of the creek. And I just had my weed eater going to town. About every three seconds it would stop because it got bogged down because the weeds were so big. I just remember standing there in the middle of that field thinking, we're never going to get this done. We're never, ever going to get this done. And then next week came, my brother came down with a little excavator, a little tiny excavator. He started 
getting the weeds up. He started pulling the trees down. I thought, this looks really good. This looks really good. But it was still so big. And there were so many times throughout this process that I look back at this thinking, man, we're never going to get this done. Like this property is just too big. Our house is coming uh, in July, hopefully maybe August, September. It's coming. We're never going to have this done. So many times, so many times we looked at this thinking, it's just overwhelming. We're never going to get this done. For the past seven weeks or so, we've been living in our house, on our property, that God blessed us with. Through that process, I'm just thinking, okay, we couldn't do it all the first day. It just wasn't going to happen the first day. We couldn't even do it all the second day or the third day. We couldn't do it all the fourth week or the fifth week or the sixth week. But you know what we could do? We could take tiny steps. Tiny steps, day by day, step by step. And guys, let me tell you something. That's what God wants from us in our faith journey. We're all about taking steps here at Richpoint Church. We always got to take steps in our faith. Take steps toward Jesus. Take steps toward uh, our relationship with Him. It's all about taking steps. And I knew in that moment, I couldn't get it all done the first day, the second day, or the third day. It was an overwhelming task. But step by step, tiny step by step we depended on the Lord whatever that giant is in your life today that you're looking at and you're thinking there's no way I'm going to get out of this there is no way that I'm ever going to get through to the other side I'm telling you today it's all about taking tiny steps when the enemy is sitting at your table telling you you're never going to make it you're not good enough God doesn't love you enough to take this sin out of your life. God doesn't love you enough to, to fix your marriage. God doesn't love you enough to fix your pornography addiction. God doesn't love you enough to, to, to help you in whatever you're dealing with. Guys, tiny step by tiny step by tiny step. When we depend and rely on the Good Shepherd, He can break any chain in our lives. Any chain in our lives. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this day. You are the good shepherd, the chain breaker, the way maker. I love you today, God. And I thank you for whatever problems that you've brought me out of in the past. I can sit and name them one by one. And every single time, step by step, you bring us out. You bring me out. Whatever's going on in lives today, I just pray, God, that you'll break chains and lead us to victory today. That whatever the Goliath is in our lives, that we will depend on you and take a step. Take a step. And that giant will fall because you have already won the battle. You've already won the battle, God. Help us to depend and live in that truth today. And we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Would you stand? We're going to have a moment where we're going we're gonna to worship the Lord. The altar is open if you'd like to come up and pray. I'm going to be in the front row if you want me to come down and pray with you. I'll come and pray with you today. But let's just have a moment to reflect on what God has spoken to our hearts today.
the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where you love ran red and my sin was white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. Where my heart peace with God and forgiveness for all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down at the cross at the cross I surrender mention of course yes we are having our book study on Wednesday 6 30 here at the church and we're going to transform the auditorium a little bit make sure that uh, everyone can be social distance but at the same time we probably will have some table groups and you'll sit with your family and all that make sure that we we stay together that way um, but we're I'm excited about this guys this is I need community I need you guys I need those of you that are out there today that that need community in your lives we also have to abide by the rules that have been set before us uh, for our safety, for our safety. I don't want to see that number continue to rise uh, in Kentucky. I don't want to see people continue to get sick. I just don't want to see it. Yes, lots of folks get better, absolutely. But then there are folks that die as well. And I don't want that to happen around us. I just don't want that to happen at all, but especially not here in Boyd County. And so we're going to continue to abide by the rules, continue to do everything that we can to make sure that folks stay safe. At the same time, we're going to try our best to have community in this moment through this book study. So come out and meet with us at 6.30 Wednesday night. You can go to the website, bridgepoint.net forward slash book study. That'll get you hooked up to the, to the link that takes you to Amazon to uh, order this book. You can also, if you know anything about downloading books on your phone, you can download the digital version. But I want to encourage you guys to download this book or to buy this book and read through the first chapter before Wednesday night at 6.30. Okay? It's going to be a lot of fun. 
tonight for students, 6.30 here at the church. It's going to be a good time. Continue your student ministry. 6 o'clock, sorry. Uh, and so lots of fun happening with that. Right outside the auditorium uh, as you exit today is the offering basket. And so we're going to move into that time of offering. It's going to uh, ask the worship team to continue playing as you guys exit in just a moment. But I pray that, that uh, if you have anything to give today, if you didn't give your tithe, your offering today, uh, or if you want to do that online, you can continue doing that online at richpoint.net forward slash give, okay? Love you guys so much. If you'll just stay seated until our hosts come and let you know that it's okay for you to exit. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day.